Speed Weeks 2004 is widely remembered for Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s extreme dominance and finally winning the Great American Race. Unfortunately, what's gone largely forgotten is a tragedy that took place just a week prior to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s victory. Not only taking the life of a track safety worker, but also, in a way, ended an entire series. <laughs> There's a lot that's new at Daytona for Speed Weeks 2004. Nextel replaces Winston, Sunoco replaces 76, and iPower replaces NASCAR as the sanctioning body for what we've long known as the Goodies Dash Series. After 2003, the NASCAR Goodies Dash Series rebranded to the iPower Dash Series. I did a full video detailing the entire history of what the series was like, so if you want to see that after this video, the link to that is down in the description below. NASCAR decided to drop its sanction because of shrinking attendances and virtually no media coverage. But in October of 2003, a deal was struck for the series to continue, and just like that, they're back at Daytona with a pretty interesting field. You know, we hear an awful lot of drivers have a motto, and many of them have this exact same one. They're living the dream. What's better than driving a race car, right? Well, Ray Proprota, who's 41 years old from Birmingham, Alabama, has a very different approach to racing. Look right here in the back of his car. You'll notice a big canister there. That is a 10-pound CO2 canister. What does he need it for? Well, because he has to control all these extra little contraptions in here. This one right here runs his throttle so that he has full speed. This one right here is for his braking. And over on the shifter, you'll notice he has a special way to engage the clutch. The reason why? Ray Propota does not have control of his lower limbs. Ray Propota is a driver. Ray Propota is also a mechanic. This is a guy who does just about everything, but when he gets in the car, it's a little bit different than any other driver. Ray Propota was a 21-year-old in the Air Force back in 1984 when he was driving his car in his native New Jersey when he suffered an accident that would completely change his life. He broke his neck in the accident and became paraplegic. Racing helped him get through the pain and heartache of losing his legs as he was a pretty talented mechanic and helped his friends work up the ranks. But while being a mechanic was cool and all, he wanted to eventually be a driver. But how was that possible? NASCAR legend and Alabama gang's Bobby Allison helped Ray Perpota learn some driving tips as the two were in the same rehabilitation center back in 1988. Perpota wanted to race in ARCA, but the required budget was beyond his reach, and after considering for a while engaging in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, again, he was forced out due to lack of funds. But there was a silver lining. He was able to compete in the lower budget Goodies Dash series in 2003. He obtained a NASCAR license, passed all of the requirements, and attempted to qualify in four Goodies Dash series races and made three of them, becoming the first known paraplegic to compete in a national stock car race. He requested a license for Daytona and passed all of the necessary tests. The executive vice president for the series at the time said the biggest thing Thing we're concerned with is the safety. We have special meetings with the safety people because of him. Ray Propota's car, it has not moved yet. He's still sitting on pit road. Ray, what's going on? Well, Larry, basically they've just said there's no power. They're not quite sure exactly what it is. He said he switched over the other ignition box, nothing, but it just absolutely won't fire at all. And uh, so the crew is going to try to see if they can find out what it is. But so far, no idea, just no power on the instigator. And, and certainly I would question, is this a product of changing the engine without getting any practice on it? After qualifying 26 and changing the engines with no practice, the team failed to start the race. While they were doing whatever they could to figure out the issue, the season was getting underway. Pace car is in. We're set to go racing for 60 laps, 150 miles. The inaugural Dash Series race under the iPower sanction is underway. Ray Dunlap with Ray Propota and Ray, so much work goes into getting ready for this. What in the world's got you behind the wall before the green? Isn't that something that would go on the checklist before the race, or did something happen to it? Uh, it was checked, and the car started in the garage area, so it, it, it might have a bad sell, or who knows, we got gremlins all week, just another step. 
Unbelievable. So the race goes green and the zero car is still behind the wall. While not starting the race is bad, it doesn't compare to the awful events that are about to take place. While the field was racing in a pack, there was a serious accident that occurred on the ninth lap. Trouble turn three. The car. car to wall. Two cars around. Oh! A hard hit from the 29 of Tony Billings. And there is Billings Revelator coming to rest. All torn up. That was a hard hit. Both cars were destroyed in the accident and other vehicles were damaged as well. While Billings was conscious and able to move, he had to be extracted from his car, which was cut open during the operation. He was taken to the Halifax Medical Center, where he was in satisfactory condition on Sunday night. Clevenger managed to leave his car unscathed and was checked and released at the Enfield Care Center. While all of this was going on, Propota's mechanics fixed the issue with the faulty battery. Ray Paprota has solved his battery problems and the instigator rejoins or joins the fray. So it's pit stop time. Well, for us on Speed Channel. <laughs> we'll be right back to Daytona after this. So we've had something happen here because Ray Propota, he just came out on the racetrack after this caution. He has all kinds of damage there. The instigator on the back of his car hasn't yet run a lap of green. I don't know what happened, Larry, but it looks just like somebody has run through the back of that race car. All of a sudden, Ray Propota's car had a lot of damage during the caution, and now the field is stopped on pit road under the red flag. During the caution period, an accident occurred that has involved one of the track's safety workers. So the cars have been brought to pit road and halted under the red flag where we remain with 19 laps completed. At the opposite end of the track, safety crews were performing a routine check to clear any remaining debris accumulated during the course of the race. Roy H. Weaver III, a 44-year-old track crew supervisor, had gone out to pick up a piece of debris up in turn two. It appears the pickup crew did not inform the race control that debris was found in turn two. Therefore, the information was not relayed to other marshals or to the other drivers and their spotters. Because of the 21 degree banking, Weaver had to almost crawl up the banking, making it difficult for incoming drivers to see him. Propota was unaware of all of this and approached turn two at more than 100 miles per hour. As he drove into turn two, he spot Weaver in the middle of the track and immediately hit the brakes. The car fishtailed and the rear of the passenger side struck Weaver. He was flipped over the vehicle and was killed instantly. One fan who saw the whole thing from atop of his trailer had said, the guy was running one second he took two steps on the track, and it was over. Another thing that's haunting about this tragedy is what was shown on TV. Not the incident itself, but during the red flag period. They're hosing down turn number two. Why do you think? Is it to just hose down debris? I doubt it. During the caution, an accident occurred in turn two at the opposite end of the speedway. That accident did involve a track safety worker, and it is that situation that has put us under this very lengthy red flag. So our coverage of this event will conclude here, and we invite you to tune in to Speed News later on this evening for further details and updates on the iPower Dash Series 150. The only racing on today's schedule here at Daytona International Speedway was the season opening round of the iPower Dash Series, and unfortunately, it was marred by a tragic accident. We have just received a statement from the Speedway that veteran supervisor of the track crew, Roy H. Weaver, was killed in an on-course incident during that race. The race got back underway and was shortened by 20 laps from 60 to 40. Scott Weaver fell to 18th, which opened the door for pole sitter Danny Bagwell to take home the victory. NASCAR officials removed the vehicle from the race course to carry their own private investigation before law enforcement officials could inspect it. That led to a bitter disagreement between the two parties. Hmm, geez, I wonder why. And of course, for that, NASCAR was much criticized. After investigating, the Daytona Beach Police Department determined 
this was all an accident. While some in the media questioned Propota's ability to race, the field had his back 100%. There was also criticism about the race not concluding after the tragedy, which I gotta admit, even for 2000 standards, it's still pretty crazy they even finished the race. This incident was also the end for the Dash series, as after the 2004 season concluded, they tried to return to Daytona in 2005, but couldn't get enough funds, and then eventually cancelled the season entirely. Even the highlights during the 2004 season did whatever they could to gloss over the death. Another incident during that same caution brought out the red flag, bringing all the cars to pit road. When green flag racing resumed in the now shortened I Power Dash 150, Danny Bagwell powered his machine to the front to take the checkered flag after 45 laps of racing, putting the first I Power Dash event into the history books. Unfortunately, we're now the series that killed a corner worker at Daytona. Eventually, the remains of the series became is cars and lasted until 2011. My dad was working at a speedway and during a race, he was sent out into the racetrack to pick up debris and a race car came around and hit and killed him. Since my husband's death, there's been kind of like a cloak of sadness that follows us. We are so scattered. We're not as together, and we're all dealing with this in our own way. Losing my father, it's made me realize that spending time with your family is so important, and just to be thankful for each day that we have, because you don't know what tomorrow holds. One year later, in a bit of a twist, the Weaver family participated in the eighth season of The Amazing Race. In this season where families competed, it's actually viewed as the worst season of them all. If you want to learn more about why that is, the link to that video is down in the the description below. According to the Amazing Race subreddit, one of the reasons Season 8 is regarded as one of the worst is because the Weaver family was very polarizing during the season. We don't like the Weaver family. The white trash family. The mom is the wicked witch. You either loved or hated them, but I do hate the show for making them go through this. Make your way to the Talladega Super Speed. No! Uh, can't. What? You guys, I want to tell you something. Sure. Your daddy liked racing. Just let it go, you're above all this. I mean, come on, why Amazing Race, why? Why are we torturing this family? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. They made them go to a similar racetrack after their dad died a year ago. They ended up finishing third, and three years later, the family reached the settlement with the racetrack. This is how old all of them are today, and the most recent news I could find on this family was the son was actually a collegiate cyclist with ambitions to go overseas. Quick update as I'm editing this, not only did he become a professional cyclist, but he's married and has a family. Good for him. Wherever the family's at, if y'all are even watching this, I hope you all are at peace. I'd really like to see us get back to the speedways. Um, I think that's what made this series so much different than a late model series or the ASA or some of those other series out there that were similar in, in stature to us. I think um, having an opportunity to get the cars back on a super speedway and getting in and, and I like we love being a headliner at the tracks but I'd really like to see us get involved with some of the other sanctioning bodies open wheel cars some other things where we can we can get into some of the bigger tracks even the bigger short tracks and and uh, get back into some of those things where we where we cut our teeth on with this series. Ray Propota continued to live his life after the tragedy, staying around racing and sharing his story. Because it is a feel-good story, and he'll always go down in history as the first paraplegic driver in a major stock car series. But the tragedy is something I'm sure always haunted him until he died on June 29th, 2022. This tragedy took place on February 8th, 2004, and I'm uploading this video on February 8th, 2024, 20 years later. And unfortunately, this tragedy has gone largely forgotten. And the thing is, we can't forget about stuff like this because we could be destined to repeat it. To everyone affected by this tragedy, I wish you nothing but the best and hope you are all at peace. Roy H. Weaver III was 44 and Ray Propota was 60 years old. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.